And if you're speaking today, we wanted to invite you to come and sit up on the stage if you're speaking today. So if you're one of our speakers, if you'd move to the stage. And for everyone else, if you please find your seat so we can get started. Thank you so much for being here. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid. Oh, I won't be afraid just as long as you stand and by me. So darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand, stand by me, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble, the sea. I won't cry. I won't cry. No, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand. Stand by me. And all
Good morning to everyone. This is a beautiful morning this morning. And we are here to celebrate the life of Elijah Emmanuel Lee. And first of all, we're going to start out with our opening prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Oh Lord, we come to you at this time of great shock and grief and ask that your grace would be a shed your peace and comfort to all who are mourning this death that was so sudden and so very unexpected. Lighten our darkness, O oh Lord, we pray, and comfort our sorrowing hearts. Pour your peace that passes all understanding into the hearts of all that are grieving and shower the assurance of your love on all at this time of sadness. Lord, we are not to grieve as those who have no hope, those that have no trust in Christ our Savior. For our hope and trust is in you and our eyes are looking to you for strength encouragement and comfort at this time of great sadness lord it is at this time like this that we suddenly began to realize the great frailties of life and the brief portion that we are permitted on this earth. Cause all who are grieving here today to take stock of our own individual lives and help us to be wise, to number our days. Help us to live our lives as unto the Lord, knowing that at any time you may choose to call us home as well. Thank you, Father, that our times are in your hands and there are no sudden deaths in your economy. May we live wisely from this day forward and use us, we pray, to be a comfort to others who may experience similar times of great sadness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we are going to have a slide show. Way 
in the vibe is feeling strong and was small turn to a friendship a friendship turn to a bond and that bond will never be broken the love will never get lost and when brotherhood come first then the line will never be crossed established it on our own when that line had to be drawn and that line is what we reach so remember me when i'm gone how can we not talk about family when family's all that we got everything i would do you were standing there by my side and now you can be with me for the last time Such an inspirational young man he was. And at this time, we're going to have moments of reflections. Coach Ernie Howren, Patty Brohard, Joshua Malafu, and Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Lee. Come in that order, please. Thank you. You know, to see in those pictures up there, uh, you could see the smile. That was the first thing that I remembered most. Elijah was the kind of kid that could bring so much energy, life of the party, and positivity to any room or situation. And the reason for that was Elijah's smile. He just had so bright. And, and he had this energy that made you feel good about yourself, teammates and coaches included. How Elijah carried himself, his smile back with that positivity was how he approached life. Elijah had this genuine, honest approach, that honest approach that could include how he felt at any given moment and let you know how good he was feeling or how bad he felt, which wasn't very often. The one constant, though, was that smile. Our JV head coach, Coach Berg, and I we're talking about Elijah this week. We both had the same interaction at different times in Elijah's career. Elijah would tell us, I'm tired, coach. And we both inquire, why are you so tired? He'd get this big smile on his face and go, I don't know, coach. And me as a coach, as you guys know, I would follow up with the typical coach talk advice. You know, where I give an individual a lot more than they care to hear at that very moment. And Elijah would just look at me, which would happen often, and just go, come on, coach. Elijah was about family. Such an amazing teammate, a friend to all. More importantly, he took care of his own. Elijah came, came to Bishop Noah with his brother Zeke, knowing they would have to sit out his junior year due to transfer rules. 
to sit out your junior year speaks volumes, a critical junior year, speaks volumes about the kind of kid that Elijah, Elijah was. Elijah wanted to play with his brother and play for Bishop and Elk. There's no way that was easy on Elijah, but never once did you hear him complain. For Elijah to make that kind of sacrifice for his brother meant a lot. We were so fortunate that he did make that choice to join the Bishop and Oak family. Like I said, we were very lucky as a football program to have Elijah join the team. Elijah had a tremendous senior year receiving all league and all region honors. What is crazy is he earned those accolades before the playoffs even started, because that's when the vote happens. And the playoffs are where Elijah really shined, playing his best football. Our biggest games of 2018 were Elijah's best games. Elijah was a huge factor in our overtime victory win, the re win of the regional championship that year. Thinking about Elijah this week, I took time to watch his playoff games. His play in the state championship versus Gorman was by far Elijah's best game of his career. As a fan of Elijah's, it truly was a joy to watch. While my heart is hurting, I feel fortunate to have crossed paths with Elijah. Elijah's outlook on life and how he made everyone around him feel is something I'll never forget. Rest in peace, brother. First of all, I have to say I was extremely humble when I received a phone call last week asking if I would speak at Elijah's service. I was very shocked when I received the news about Elijah, but I have to say I had no idea that I had the impact I had on him as his teacher. So I want to thank you, family, for asking me to speak. Elijah was here for two years, and I was lucky enough to have him in my class for both of those years. As you all know, his graduating class was very vibrant and lively and had many outgoing personalities. Elijah's presence was that of calm. When he walked into my room, I knew he was there, not because of his voice, not because of his actions, but because of his presence. His presence was that of positive energy. Like Coach Howron said, all I had to do was look over where he was sitting, and he had that smile. I looked forward to seeing that smile every day that I had him. Now, although I did have curriculum I was to be teaching, a lot of the times our conversations went to football. We talked about what up upcoming competition there was, or we talked about what happened in the previous contest. One thing I did get to know about Elijah was his love for his family, speci specifically about his brother Zeke. As you know, maybe not all of you know, but if you played football with them, you know that Zeke had horrible muscle cramps. And so we would talk about the muscle cramps and what he could possibly do to fix those muscle cramps. The community health setting was a perfect place to talk about that. And we also were able to tie in a little bit of geology because who would have thought that salt would be the answer. So I had learned about Celtic sea salt and I sent Zeke home with a small Ziploc bag of Celtic sea salt. I can't imagine what his mother thought of me at that point. Your teacher is sending you home with salt for your brother to put in his water to help with his cramps. But we did and I heard that there were some positive results here and there, right? So when I had Zeke the following year, we would again talk about all of those things. <laughs> when I reflected this last week about having Zeke in class and I spoke to other teachers, there was just a unanimous consensus. He was this light that was added to each and every classroom that he was in. Again, sometimes that light would be overshadowed 
by some of those vibrant personalities, but Elijah was so respectful. He never had an excuse for anything. He accepted responsibility and he always gave 110% no matter what he was doing. I don't know what our atmosphere would be like without that energy. He definitely helped ground me in those moments when I thought I might lose it. As a mother of two teenagers, I can't tell you how much it meant to me to be able to have him as a student. He was humble and kind, and these are two things that I pray that my children have as they approach life. With that, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. And although he is not physically here with us, the impact he has made will always be with us and he will carry, we will carry him and our hearts with us forever. Good morning. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Josh Malafu. I'm one of Elijah's many great friends. First off, I would like to thank mom and pops for letting me come up here and speak on your behalf. I really appreciate it, thank you. I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming out here to celebrate a young and precious life, Elijah Emmanuel Lee. I knew Elijah growing up as little kids, playing peewee football and stuff. Him and Zeke. Elijah was a great football player, but not only he was a great football player, he was a great person. Humble, kind. There was never a time you see Elijah not smiling, not happy. He was always a happy person. Elijah was always there for people. You can always count on him. I always counted on him and he would always be there. Mom, I know it's hard to lose a son at this young age. And Pops, I know it's hard to lose a son at this young age. I would never understand it but since I don't have kids of my own. And Zeke, I'm sorry to lose a brother. I lost a brother too. I understand your feeling. There's a saying in my Tongan, in my Tongan culture, Toka nonga or fiamaria eiki, which means rest in God's loving hands. It's no, oh, it's, 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 it's never a goodbye. It's always a see you later. I know he will continue watching over you, his siblings, and the rest of us. As life continues on, Elijah will always be there for everybody, especially you, mom, pops, and his siblings. May you rest in peace, Elijah. I love you, I miss you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Standing here today is not easy. I didn't quite think how difficult it was going to be. All I knew is that I wanted to express how me and my family felt about Eli. Having a chance and the opportunity to do this here today seemed perfect. In reality, it's very difficult. To know that you will never see him again, or hear his voice, man breaks my heart. For a couple of days, I've been struggling with the thought of coming up here without writing anything down. But I knew that if I didn't write everything down, there was something I was going to miss about Eli, and I didn't want that to happen. I 
didn't want to make it seem like I was reading a chapter out of a book. I'm not quite sure what exactly I wanted to do or how I wanted to do it. I knew that I had to ask God for guidance, guidance. And I also asked Eli to guide me as well. So I grabbed a pen and paper and started writing. Be, being able to watch Eli grow from a boy to a young man was an honor, and it still is. Being able to share those special memories with him, man, it can't be replicated, it can't be staged, it can't be read in a book, and it can't be dreamed of. The memories are forever. Eli was a young man who was loving, caring, sincere, outgoing, sympathetic, optimistic, joyful. Every great quality a man could have, Eli carried. There were two things that made Eli so unique as an individual. As everybody already spoke about, it was his smile, man. If you knew, you knew. His smile, bro. It brought this peace to your heart that it was, it was unreal, super unreal. And his heart, the second was his heart. The love he had for his family, for those that he loved, even for those that he didn't love, man, he had love. Beautiful, beautiful soul. I don't think he ever had a hate in his heart, ever. Eli, thank you for sharing your life with my family. Thank you for allowing me to guide you at times. Thank you for accepting my family as if it was your own. Thank you for teaching our boys things that we have, as parents sometimes miss. I always remember the hard work and dedication you put on the field and off the field. Your memory will last forever because it's embedded in our hearts. Until we meet again, fly high, my guy. I love you, bro. <clears throat> I would just like to point out the fact that if he was still here, standing right in front of me face to face. And I said, I look very good today. Trust me not, I do. He probably would say, not as good as me though. And you know, he was a little, over, I mean, the thing I love about him, he's overconfident about himself, but that was just to make Eli, Eli. He had that swag, you know, you can't out swag him, he said. Oh, I can do this, oh, you can't do that. Like, okay. But that was just the man he was. Like I said, I think of more than just a brother. He was a best friend. Someone I relied on pretty much every day. A resource that just constantly, you know, hitting me every morning. I wake up every morning and just still can't believe it in shock that he's not here. But I don't believe, I don't think of it as like that. He's not technically gone. He's an angel now. He's still watching up above us, each and every one of us. He touched every single one of our hearts in ways that we can't imagine. On May 19, 2021, we lost a blessing. My life changed forever. This was and continues to be the worst day of my life for us, mom, Hayes, and all the family, friends. For me, losing someone so special as Eli in my life, things happen to people you love and care about beyond our own understandings. But the truth is, I haven't forgotten about him. We literally lost an angel. Losing someone is hard to accept. I totally understand that. Remember him is easy. Think of every memory, every, not just one of those memories, but every single memory that he's put in each one of our lives. Eli was a leader and a magnificent brother whose only purpose in life was to prove his greatness to others that doubted his skill set. He had a huge heart. <laughs> He had a huge heart and love for those smaller in need. My, I think of him as my one and only big brother. He was my hero, my role model, and my childhood best friend. And it hurts to realize that a number, another memory will not be created. Another laugh won't be shared, and another moment won't be made. My brother came, saw, and conquered in his life. Anything that 
to pose any type of threat to our family. Like I said, he, when he was down here, every single one of us was his responsibility. He's up there, God's watching over him, but also he's still watching over us, he's our responsibility. But now, each and every, each and every one of us, you know, don't want to choose to believe that, you know, he's gone. Don't think of it as like that. Do what I do every day and say, it. get, get up in the morning, say a prayer, a powerful prayer. And I, it could be a self-reflection prayer. You could just be speaking to it all day. But like I said, he came and conquered. And I, a little short story. Well, it was a long story, but I'm going to cut it short. Um... <laughs> A short story when we were little kids, and it seems like this is like the most memorable memory I will ever never forget because I always refer back to it like it's yesterday. When we were little kids, I was watching, obviously I was watching a movie, and he uh, he was coming up to me to apologize because I was playing with his favorite truck and he threw one of his toys at me because it was his favorite truck and whatnot. But he came up to me and he said, I'm sorry, Zeke. And I'm like, what are you sorry for? obviously for you know for the truck and whatnot but um he's like i'm sorry for throwing my favorite or throwing my toy at you yes it was my favorite toy and i didn't and it was wrong of me to do that and the thing that hit me the most was you have it in your heart to forgive me <laughs> to forgive me and just, like I said, I forgave him. But, like I said, it's gonna be tough for all of us. But I want you, every single person to know that I thank you for being here and I thank you for making some type of impact to his life and he's made impact to ours. Every single one of you guys is a family to me. Whether you got the same blood running through your veins, that's me, or not, you family, straight up. And he thought of that too. Every single one of these people right here is my responsibility. And I'll make it my top priority to do it for him and him alone and do it for you guys. To stay strong, but also show some type of emotion at some times. I thank you and I love you, Eli. Let's give him an applause, you know? It's tough to get up here and talk about your brother, but at the same time, it's good to talk about it. It's good to laugh about the memories. It's good to cry when you need to cry because that's life and that's what we have to do to get through. I lost my husband, but it's time to think about the good things. Think about the memories that are good. Cherish them in your heart and be grateful that God allowed us this time to get to know him and love him. Amen? <laughs> Amen. All right. Next is our focus speaker, Diaz Dixon. How are you guys doing? Um, I'm the focus speaker. I didn't know I was the focus speaker. My eyes are a little blurry right now, but I figure I'll work out a way to get through this. So part of the, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Angela and Ray for giving me the opportunity to come up and be a part of this. I cried for five hard days. Um, and I can only, I can only imagine how difficult it is. I'm glad to be able to look out here and see the wonderful family we have here to support you guys for everything that you need. But as part of being the focus speaker, I'm gonna lighten the mood for us a little bit. We've talked about some things, and, and it, I think it starts off kind of funny that everyone always thinks my name's Diaz. Those of you guys are laughing, it's Diaz. But that's something that, that happens all the time. But we know that if Elijah was sitting here right now, one thing he would want us to be doing is laughing because he was always doing something, whether it was goofy on purpose or he was just naturally goofy. Every one of us here has a memory of that he has put in our mind and in our hearts and he will continue to live with us in that way. So I have to say first, I'm glad you guys gave Zeke a round of applause because for him to be able to get through that speech without cramping up was, um, it was truly amazing. And so I know I had the Gatorade waiting and I'm glad and I'm sure we had some salt sitting on the side too. 
but he made it through, and that was quite the accomplishment. You know, the, the wonderful thing about Eli is, you know, Elijah was an amazing, amazing athlete. He could do anything. You could put him on the field. He could play any position. He could play quarterback. He could play running back, wide receiver. He could even kick the ball. And in many ways, that's how he was in life. He could do anything. He could sit down and have a serious conversation with you. He could laugh with you. He could get into conversations about what he wanted to do. And, and like it was said earlier, the kid had gusto. He had confidence. I remember when he first came to Minogue and I said, what is it you want to do? He goes, I'm, I'm going to go play at Oregon. And at the time, I think Oregon was probably number five in the country. And I kind of looked around and thought, okay, okay. And he meant it. Everything he did showed his character. He meant what he said. And he would go through a wall for you. Anyone who knows him knew that he was a, a kid of, of dignity, of character, and was going to be a hard worker. You told him he couldn't do something, he was gonna dive in to do it. And it's funny, Angela, Ray, you too, but more Angela, I'm gonna give her credit on this. I might give E a little bit of credit back there, but you teach a kid so many different things, particularly if you've got a football son and you, they grind and you're, you're taking them out, you're teaching them how to catch the ball, how to run, how to stiff arm. A dad could do all these wonderful things. And the first time they score a touchdown, what do they look at the camera and say? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. You know that was coming to you, Angela. And so when he first came and had the opportunity to be a part of Bishop Minogue, you look at it from the outside and you think, oh, this kid is coming in. He's going to get a private education. He's going to get this. He's going to get these different opportunities for all these. All the wonderful things that Bishop Minogue was able to give him pale in comparison to what he gave to Bishop Minogue. We want to talk about diversity. We struggle in this country today. Elijah was about inclusion. He taught people all around him. It was about feeling like being a part of the team, being at the table, bringing all the different personalities, all the different backgrounds, and bringing people together. His senior year was triumphant. You walked, anyone who ever walked to the school and you walked through the hallways, there was always laughter. And I guarantee you most of the time it was coming from something Elijah had done or was planning. I remember one time having a conversation with him. We were leaving the school and there was a chicken, there was a rooster out in front of the school. Anyone ever seen that rooster? I've never seen it again. For those of you guys who have seen the rooster, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, what is a rooster doing here on campus? I'm like, why did the rooster cross the road to get tuition assistance? <laughs> really bad joke I wanted to throw in there. But we have to remember that in the times of crying and being upset, Elijah would look at us right now and he would probably tell us, don't cry because our relationship we had with him and the way that it was is over. Don't cry. At this point in time, we need to smile because it happened. We had an opportunity to be a part of the love that he spread. God tells us to go out and spread love. We need to lead with love. And here's a 20 year old kid who figured out what sometimes people at 75 years old can't do. The grief that we feel today, it's just the price that we pay for the great love that we have. This kid spread it. That's why we're sitting out here in this heat today. Every single one of us. And remember that everything that we love continues to be a part of us. He continues to live. As a matter of fact, I hate to say this, Ray, when you die, man, you got a bill to pay because those hinges broke off those doors when they welcomed him into those pearly gates. And he is looking over us. Death ends life, but it does not end relationships. It does not end the impact. We got to remember when we're thinking about today that, remember that today is the day yesterday we were worried about and we called it tomorrow. We can't do that. Life is precious. Life is short. 
It's not guaranteed tomorrow. So that love that Elijah was so good at spreading, we need to be spreading on a daily basis. Don't let a day go by without spreading love. When we sit on this field and I, I came out here and I was like, man, there were a lot of moments on this field that were just full of love. And he was a critical part of that. And he continues to be a critical part of that today. And it only dies if you don't do your part. And if you don't do your part, he would call you out on it right now. Just like he's telling Zeke he looks better, he would ask us all to be stepping up. And if you think you're too small to make a difference, think again. When you're laying in bed and that mosquito's flying around, that mosquito's little, but he messes up my sleep every time. I'm getting up looking for him. We're never too small to make a difference, to have an impact. Spread love. Lead with love. His legacy requires it. Eli Lee. And there's all the little things that you can do. You know, someone once said that when you see a man open up the car door for his wife, either the car is new or the wife is new. Let's figure out how to do it for the old wife and the old beater. Let's leave with love. It's funny because I came up here today, my wife scooped me up in the car, and she said, um, you know, I had this one little piece of paper. I, I don't like writing anything I talk about because I stumble. She says, that one little piece of paper, what, what, what are you gonna do with that? And I said, I am gonna hone in on my inner Elijah and just talk, because we know he could talk always. So if I'm talking about him, right, <laughs> it's going to naturally flow. But I want to leave you with my favorite quote in all the world by Maya Angelou. People will remember, people won't remember what you said. People won't remember what you did. But they will always remember how you made them feel. Let's be Eli strong and let's lead with love and don't miss the moments. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here for this family because this is our family and we are here for you. Love you, love you. Amen, how beautiful that was. I tell you what, our lives is that of the hourglass with so much sand in that hourglass. And every day, sand goes down. So we don't know how much time we have, but the time that we do have, we have to complete our mission just as he has completed his mission. And that is so important that we make our day count, that we think before we speak, that we love, that we share, and that we give. It's important that our mission will be complete one day that we will see Elijah again. At this time, our closing remarks will come from Principal Thorson. Two short years ago, I stood on this stage at this same time in the year and addressed the graduating class of 2019. Elijah Lee was in that graduating audience, along with many of you, and a part of the many memories, shenanigans, and stories we shared. When I spoke that evening, I characterized the graduating class as unexpected. From the adventures to the achievements, they surprised us in so many ways. And while that evening the word was used in a beautiful way to describe the spirit, energy, personality, and talent of that class, it also tragically fits the moment that has brought us together today. 
Elijah's role in the unexpected of that graduating class was his sincere heart and loving spirit. Not a day went by that he and his brother Zeke did not hug us in the hallway, stop to see how we were, stop to thank us, or to check in on one of us. And we were supposed to be the adults running the place. Elijah was not careless with anyone. He made sure to make everyone he met, everyone he knew, feel that they could be his friend, feel that they could be appreciated and loved. In a world that too often hears stories of unkindness and intolerance, this was the unexpected gift he gave our school and our community, and it could not have been more perfect. At no point did I think I would be speaking to all of you this soon in a setting like this. And at no point do we ever expect to lose a soul so young, so loving, and so full of life. But as we leave here today, remember Elijah's unexpected gift to us. Please bring the kindness, care, and love he showed our community to the lives you lead now, and you will always know and have Elisha. You have an unexpected guardian angel with you now, watching over each of you. And although we may not have wanted him there so soon, you know his strength and grace will be with each of you. Embrace that strength and bring his goodness to others and he will always be a part of us. God bless you all and God bless Elijah. Now at this time, we're going to have our closing prayer with Elder Michael Snyder. Um, I thank God for just being here at this moment and uh, kind of, it's a hard thing to do, you know, it's just like because with me being a minister of the gospel and Honoring the word of God, you know, the Lord says to give thanks in all things. In all things, you know, it didn't say some, you know, the Lord knew that certain circumstances that we would uh, encounter in this life, but he still wants us to give him thanks. Uh, and it's hard, but there's a, there's a, a certain deliverance, there's a certain peace and comfort uh, when we surrender our will to hold on to the, the hurt or anxiety, whatever we might be going through, but there's, there's going to be a great blessing, a release um, in encountering with the Spirit of God when we can just say thank you. Um, and Angela, I just want to say to you that uh, you did well. Yes, you did well. Keep your head up. Um, um, Elijah was very special. And, you know, when I laid, I know I didn't get up here to, I came up here to say the closing words, but I must say something. Um, he was close to me um, in certain aspects of his life, but I just remember he's one of the most respectful gentlemen I've ever met in my life. He always embraced me, and it, was, uh, it wasn't like uh, uh, something just to, you know, say hi or whatever, but I felt the, the impact of the embrace every single time. And he was just the most respectful, uh, kind. Um, and I look at him as a, as a son, you know, I've known him a long, long time. And it's always been the same. And I, I just thank God for the relationship um, that you allowed me to even have with your family. Uh, could, have, could have been different, you know, we've come a long way. And, but God is good and he's good to us all. Um, this is a great, uh, I'd just like to thank Bishop Anode for allowing this event, this event to be possible here. Uh, let us give Bishop Anode a, a round of applause at this time. Um, but let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for this moment, oh God. We thank you for the life as we celebrate Elijah Lee, oh God in his homecoming, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, God, let your glory be revealed upon each of us as we have gathered together to show our love, oh God, to express love as we know. So we pray for a, a deeper revelation, oh God, of how we should embrace one another and love one another, God. Show each other the love of God, for we don't know the moment, oh God, when you should call our, our names. So God, help us to be ready to meet you, because one day, that maybe sooner or later, God, each of us, we have to meet the maker. And God, you are the maker of all things. You're the, the giver of life. So we thank you, O oh God, for this moment. And we pray for your perfect peace that surpasses all man's understanding. That you would shower down your blessings upon families, God. Help us to wrap our, love, our arms and love as you love, God. Genuinely, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, you are a wonder in our lives. So we pray for protection and your guardian angels to be with us, to, be, to go with us and give us favor in this pathway of life over all of our family, all of our friends, our loved ones, God. And let us not take life for granted, but let us help embrace life as life comes to us, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we thank you and we honor you for life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we all say thank God. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. This concludes our celebration. We want to please join the family for refreshments directly after the celebration at Pinocchio's Bar and Grill. And also, we are so thankful and blessed to have Bishop Minot's family to show us so much love and honor during our time of bereavement. Thank you so much. This is from the family, and I want to thank all of you for being here. And uh, this, is, this is a family affair, amen? It takes a village to raise a child. So thank you again, and thank you for this time of you allowing me to be that program mover. <laughs> amen. Thank you so much, and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.